A lot of Europeans doubt that there is enough space for Chinese civil society to flourish, and I think it's a legitimate point of view. At the same time, we know that there are reformers who want to give Chinese citizens more voice in public policy making and implementation. So, by sharing European experiences through dialogue and cooperation, we can actively support Chinese civil society organizations. Seven organizations from Europe and China have embarked on a journey of collaboration. They will implement eight dialogues, two international conferences, and 16 participatory public policy initiatives. to 15th, EU-China Civil Society Dialogue on Climate Change and Sustainable Consumption and Production is held in the University of Nottingham in Bo, China. The officials from the governments, the delegates from NGOs, and the scholars are all invited to this event. However, do they really practice what they preach? The air conditioning, the bottled water, the paper cups and during these three days we question that whether the conference itself is sustainable or not now let's hear the voices of the participants因为是夏天嘛,就是可以脱掉西服 I think they've actually made an effort to address that because they've, they gave us all mugs with our names on so it was other people's choices to use the paper cups yeah so that was a choice issue they made an effort it, the, the room is the, the, the main conference room was not as cold as it could have been in fact everybody needs to be told that they really must return their badges and they must actually use up their water first before they start a new bottle and the uh, staff supporting it should also do that rather than uh, simply saying okay we want to be nice to people Therefore, we provide more than it is in fact absolutely necessary. I give you one example. If I travel to Europe, um, ideally I would walk there, right? Because it's the most environmentally friendly way, but that would take me a year. So of course I will fly. Uh, but I can actually, in Ningbo, I could walk home. That would take me half an hour. So if I want to be environmentally friendly, I will walk home, but I will fly to Europe. And here, for a conference, it's the same. Um, so, for example, in the conference center, like we couldn't put these entrances, you know, the water dispensers, because that way people would have to stand up, go outside, come back. That would have been very um, distracting for our speakers, and it would have been very impolite if people constantly walk out and in just to get water. So we made a conscious decision that we will use um, uh, bottles. There's, there's obviously like a certain sense of irony in doing this whole thing about uh, responsible consumption and here we are uh, taking plastic cups all day and using um, un unrecyclable resources. When we talk about recycling, it obviously doesn't make any sense. But when you're doing things in this scale, you need to make people as comfortable as possible so that they will come here and make the changes. If you don't make it comfortable for people, then they won't want to be here. You won't get the policy changes you want from the politicians that you want to be here. So for the next uh, conferences, maybe we could think about how to address these issues. 
for example, everybody took a plane, most people took planes to come here to compensate for the carbon emissions that were produced. We should uh, try to get some offsets for this, that we maybe uh, support some tree planting projects or, or other carbon offset schemes. In the environmental protection, there are much more detailed stuff to deal with. In terms of new green life, we still have a long way to go.